Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. What goes up must come down. And when it comes to sending billion dollar capsules into space, recovering them when they come down is an essential process. These members of the U.S. military are practicing recovery operations for NASA's Orion spacecraft. Designed as a semi-reusable crewed space vehicle, the Orion was designed by Lockheed Martin and Airbus to withstand the immense strain of multiple trips to space. Like other capsules throughout history, the Orion is intended to splash down in the ocean when it returns back to Earth. While this makes sense, it poses a problem because the Orion can only float for a short time. Therefore, it's up to the U.S. Navy to locate the capsule and recover it as quickly as possible. In this case, the crew of the USS Arlington is using fast boats and hooks to direct the capsule into the ship's well deck. As an amphibious transport dock, this particular boat possesses a large open deck at the stern, where it can launch and recover boats and other vehicles more easily. As the Orion capsule weighs around 20,000 pounds and has no way to direct itself once in the water, recovery operations can still prove to be a challenge. Dealing with large, highly advanced vehicles like the Orion spacecraft necessitates a lot of care at every stage of the process. Even just delivering the capsule to and from a launch area requires the use of a specialized plane. NASA's Super Guppy is a modified wide-body cargo plane designed to carry space modules, just like the Orion. Its massive cargo bay allows the plane to carry a variety of large-scale objects and vehicles safely, in ways that standard cargo planes could not. Once the bulbous cargo section is opened, the entire Orion spacecraft can be directed inside and secured in just a few minutes. The Orion spacecraft is just one part of NASA's Artemis program. This is essentially a human and robot moon exploration plan. It's based around establishing a human presence on the moon for the first time since 1972. The Orion is placed atop the SLS Space Launch System with the highest payload and liftoff thrust of any rocket currently in operation. The first attempt at launching the Artemis 1 rocket took place in late 2022.
It was directed by teams at the Moral Operations Center in Florida. The mission, which ended up being a rousing success, saw the Artemis travel more than 1.4 million miles on a path around the moon before the capsule splashed down in the Pacific Ocean off California. Immediately after splashdown, the USS Portland, a San Antonio-class amphibious transport dock, rushed in to perform the recovery. The Portland was NASA's at-sea command center for the operation and was also tasked with taking the orbital back to California after landing. As with the practice session seen before, the Portland's crew used a series of fast boats to interface with the capsule and direct it into the vessel's well deck. Once the ropes were attached, crew members inside the well deck were required to help pull the capsule into the Portland before the waves could blow the operation off course. Well decks are one of the most important inventions in naval history, as they drastically simplify the process of launching and recovering boats of all types. They are most commonly constructed aboard ships that perform amphibious assault duties. This involves carrying both sailors and a detachment of Marines for operations on land. For this reason, the U.S. military developed the landing craft air cushion. Essentially, this is a massive $50 million hovercraft designed to take a detachment of Marines and vehicles directly from the well deck to the shore. Unlike traditional ship-to-shore vehicles, the LCAC is incredibly fast. In fact, it's capable of traveling at up to 70 knots when empty and 40 knots when loaded with up to 75 tons of vehicles and troops. Because it travels on top of a bladder that creates a cushion of air, the LCAC can immediately transition from operating on the ocean to operating on land. As a hovercraft, it can travel down paved roads and over thick brush with equal ability. All LCACs are designed with a large front ramp, allowing for quick loading and unloading of vehicles like tanks and Humvees. At 87 feet long and 47 feet wide, each LCAC represents a fairly large platform upon which to store equipment. It also means that Marines can land in areas where traditional boats might not be able to come ashore.
The genius of the LCAC design is that it can move equally well over virtually any surface. Because the vehicle is constantly supported by an air cushion, friction is virtually non-existent when moving across water, land, swamp, sand, or pavement. This simplifies launch and recovery, allowing the LCAC to drive out of the well deck and onto the water. It can then deliver its payload and drive directly back into the well deck without needing recovery assistance. Though waves and wind can cause problems as with any other maritime vehicle, the LCAC is best equipped to accomplish repeated trips to and from the shore in the shortest amount of time. In the Navy, launch and recovery operations are not limited merely to boats and other vehicles. Though they are often thought of as underwater missiles, torpedoes actually have more in common with the ship firing them than the missiles used on land or in the air. Each torpedo has its own propulsion system, can navigate and track its target. These ships possess both deck-mounted and hull-mounted torpedo tubes. Upon encountering an enemy vessel, these tubes can be maneuvered into a firing position and release a torpedo in a matter of seconds. Once fired, a torpedo will speed towards its target at up to 40 knots. Upon making contact with their target, the warhead inside the torpedo will explode. This can do tremendous damage to a vessel, regardless of how well armored its hull might be. In fact, though ships have survived being hit by a torpedo in the past, modern torpedoes are much more dangerous. Though they pack a huge amount of destructive power, Torpedoes are slow and cumbersome to load, usually requiring efforts from several crew members. Luckily, they can also be dropped from aircraft. Not unlike LCACs and space capsules, the dummy torpedoes used in various exercises like Torpex need to be recovered so that they can be used again. Indeed, these weapons can cost between 700000 and several million dollars, so divers and other recovery teams are often trained to safely get them back on board after firing. In this scenario, a team of U.S. Coast Guard divers is in the Arctic Sea helping to recover a test torpedo fired during ISEX, a three-week naval exercise focused on cold weather operational readiness. In such an environment, recovery divers need to overcome several unique challenges, including sheets of ice several feet thick.
Once the torpedo is secured, it must be lifted out of the ice by either a helicopter or a shipboard crane. In the end, as with any other recovery process, it takes teamwork and coordination to produce the right results. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.